the first thing I'd like to point out, because this is the first time an Asian bank has won uh, such a global award, it speaks uh, extremely well to an important truth, and that is that the center of economic gravity is indeed shifting eastwards. Asia is beginning to be more relevant, and that's an important truth to underline. But I think what's really captured the attention of a lot of the global audience in recent times has been our dramatic efforts at digital transformation. We embarked on this journey early and we are today increasingly recognized as a unique case study, not just in banking, but cross industry, as a legacy company that has been able to transform to a large extent and be relevant to the new way of banking and to the new world of technology and digitization. Euromoney named us the world's best digital bank twice. One of their important points in the citation was that this digital transformation is more pervasive at DBS than most companies. And I think there's been an extremely important part of uh, getting this recognition. Our customers in the future are going to continue to expect a kind of banking and a kind of customer experience, which is extremely different from the experience they've been able to obtain in the past. This is true for customer experiences in every industry. I believe that we have the opportunity to make banking invisible to hide the banking product in the context of what customers really want to do with their lives. And it is that ambition that drives us to continue to reimagine how banking can be done in years to come. So a great opportunity on the one side, a great uh, opportunity to reimagine banking on the other side. I think we've only begun to scratch the surface. There is also recognition that in this day and age of questions about the role of big companies in society, DBS continues to be a beacon for a company that stands for purpose, being relevant and doing the right things in the context of people, businesses and economies. This sense of purpose, I think, is an important element that helps to distinguish us as well. The whole concept of investing for profits is now morphing into not just investing for profits, but investing for good and investing for impact. The reason is threefold. The first is there will be an unprecedented transfer of wealth from the first generation to the next. The next generation is about 90 trillion to about 30 million millennials. They want to invest in sustainable companies that don't just make profits, but make profits for good outcomes. And the second is, you know, the measures of success, MSCI for example, all MSCI component stocks, or at least two-thirds, will somehow be influenced by some element of ESG regulations or ESG standards. And the third is, as more women come into managing their own wealth, women too have a strong ESG impact investing notion or concept in their portfolio management. So looking at these trends, I think um, you know, ESG will inherently be part of a private banking portfolio. If you look at the group as a whole, you know, our digitalization efforts are most visible across our apps. So things like DBS iWealth, our remittance services, our payment services, and our standalone digital-only banks in Indonesia and India. For us, you know, digitalization goes beyond just apps, right? It is not just putting digital lipstick on the pig, right? It goes beyond that. So our entire transformation of strategy actually focuses across three pillars. The first thing is really about digitizing ourselves to the core, you know, and having a relentless focus on the customer. And at the end of the day, most importantly, changing the culture of the bank and the mindset of the bank to be like a 24,000 people startup.